Good morning, good morning. <clears throat> Just getting myself all sorted out here. I've come on a little bit early, so if you come in, in and you can um, hear and see everything okay, just let me know. Otherwise you'll have the dulcet tones of corellas and galahs in the backyard getting their morning seed in. itching to get back to this little fellow. He's been very patiently waiting over the holiday break. And I'm just trying to decide what we actually do today. Whether we do the other side of the face or we do that little nose. I'm kind of thinking we might do the nose. I'll wait a few more minutes yet. goodness I hope your holiday season was nice that hopefully you got to have a little bit of a relax at some point maybe <laughs> no the world's a bit brutal at the moment isn't it it feels like it's never ending it's drama on top of drama um, which is very wearing on our poor psyches uh, you know we're not made for this level of constant barrage been a bit hard on us all I think uh, but let me know in the chat how you are you know I want to make sure that you're doing okay and let me know if you managed to do any pencil magic over the break too if you're able to create something new altogether or if you worked on an older project or anything indeed I've actually managed to do quite a bit of um, quite a bit of pencil work and I've had two weeks away from my muggle job I've, I've done work at home for it but not um, been into the the job at all and I've actually managed to get quite a lot drawn in that period although I admonish myself for not getting even more done <laughs> there really needs to be more hours in the day um, but yeah, I've, I've, I've really enjoyed it. I've, I have had a bit of a break, which is really nice. It hasn't happened all of 2020, really, so I'll not say no to it. I did end up last year, at the end of the year, getting a really nasty chest infection. And I'm still not 100% on that, it's so bizarre. Um, my, my voice tends to go out a little bit every now and then, so... I, um, I've got my tea here to keep my vocal cords lubricated. And um, hopefully we'll be right. But if I sound a bit croaky every now and then, it's just... I'm fine, it's just my vo voice still isn't 100%. Well, we might make a start, hey? What do you think? As I said, I'm kind of debating whether to go and finish the top of the other side of his head and around his eye, or to do this little nose. I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards the nose, but if you have a strong opinion, either way, let me know now. Otherwise, I'm just going to start in. I kind of think it would be nice to have a little nose to look at. There's not a huge amount of detail in the nose either. Um, so I don't think it would take as long as around the eye, for example. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I know it's seven o'clock, but it feels really early today. <laughs> I don't know why. I didn't sleep very well, I think so. 
All right, I'm going to make a start. I'm going to start on the nose. So if you have objections to that, let me know and I can move up um, to the eye. But now, what am I going to start? How am I going to start this? Okay, so this um, I can see uh, lightness still coming through in a couple of different spots. On the very tip of his nose is a cool grey. So we'll use a cold grey one for the little highlighty area there. Um, I think we might just use a cold grey one around the whole thing actually, looking at it. There's a little bit of warmth to it, but not a lot. So I've got my cold grey one. I've got my outline. Um, what I might actually do first before I use my cold grey one is get the dark sepia and just get down. No, I won't get dark sepia. I'm going to get warm grey six because it's just a little more grey than brown. And there's not brown in his um in his little nose there. So, all right. So I'm, I've got my outline trace, but it's just a guide, an outline is just a guide, so you should always be referring to your reference to get the actual shape of what you're rendering because sometimes the line translations are not the best, even if you think that they're going to be. So I'm just lightly penciling in the structure. Of this little nose. Terrible glare on my iPad this morning. Um, And we finally have got a few more birds uh, with babies coming in. So the babies have been really late this year. I'm not really sure what that's about. Um, and nowhere near as many as I have had on other years. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. What that means. Or whether they've found a new crèche. That's a sweet little face. I'm so glad to be back here doing this. So I'm just getting a, an understanding of uh, the structure of the nose here before I start adding in some cold grey one as a base layer. Sometimes a reference will be really dark and it's quite hard to see what um, what's actually being uh, what's actually there to be translated. So you can always make a duplicate of your uh, reference and really lighten it up and with wildlife photos yeah, it's necessary at times. Uh, the thing that you want to do to remember though when you do that is to still refer to your original photo for your values uh, and your hues and tones and all that sort of thing because if you use your lightened photo for anything other than understanding the structure better you essentially shift all of your value and tones and you can end up with um, something that just doesn't quite look right as in the right colors etc so that's something to be aware of okay i think that that's 
pretty much it there. Alright, let's lay down some cool grey one. got my structure so my pencil is not very sharp and that's fine for this purpose I just want to get a base layer down so I'm moving in the direction of the fur And I'm probably not going to cover all of this internal structure with the cold grey. I'm just going to do the, the couple sort of highlighty areas. But I am getting all of this furry section around the nose down. And the reason I'm not going to go underneath the dark is because uh, A, it's not necessary. Um, and B, you can get darker darks if you don't have a light um, base layer down on this paper, on smooth paper, like this. So, if you've done a bit of playing with um, colored pencil on a smooth paper like this, just realized I haven't got my tracing paper for my hand down um, you'll know that it's, it makes a huge difference to the feel um, of the pencil the darker pencil down onto a lighter uh, base layer then if you go directly onto the paper uh, it takes a little bit more as in layers to um, to get the depth of colour that you're after So I'm going over the lines a little bit too because there's some sort of fuzzy areas. All right, so the highlighty areas. Let's go in a little bit further on this one too. We've got on the bridge of the nose there, or on the tip of the nose rather. They're not really stark highlights. They're um. They're quite subtle. Um, okay, now for the nose color itself, um, I'm not going to use dark sepia. I'm, I've used the um, cold gray or warm gray, whichever one it was that I used, six, like a, a dark the darkest of the greys. I'm going to stick with cool grey colouring on the nose there. So um, I can see we're going to need six, so the darkest one. Um, but there's some lighter as well. I definitely, definitely five and four. There might even be a three in there. But I say that we start a little bit lighter because then we can build up on top of that. So I'm going to take cold grey 4 for now and I'm looking at, we're going to need some of this lovely Delft blue as well. Um, what we do need to use is the embossing tool as well. Um, I'm looking at the way that the fur sort of moves down and onto the nose. So you can see we did some embossing if you watched the previous videos here. Um, I'm going to come in these areas here where there's a really noticeable light fur above a dark skin. Um, so that'll just help us keep those really nice, really obvious little fur strokes. Um, and I think I'll do a few down here on so the lip area. I'm 
I'm becoming more and more a fan of um, embossing. And I like how you can make a layered effect with it, so doing it now is a really good time to make sure you get those really light lights before you start adding in um, some of the darker colours. But you can also do it a little bit further on when you've got some sort of mid-tones down and you want those as an undercolour before you bring in a darker colour again. Oh, we might do a few here too, I haven't done here. The thing is though, you're sort of going blind. You can sort of see where you've been and sometimes the, the metal leaves are like a little scratch on there, but as in grey wise you can see. But um, you want to try and make sure that you're not making little picket fences, that you're not doing everything all in a little row, which is quite difficult. So I'm lightly coming in here with um, more grey four, oh, cold grey four. Start get a set, start to get some of these values down. So I think again you can see the really um, purpley quality to these cool greys, uh, to this nose rather, that we need to add to the, to the cool greys. It's getting a little bit of a base down of this cold grey four. And so the big thing to remember when it comes to using pencils, coloured pencils as a medium, is that it's a slow medium. Um, you don't sort of whip through it, you can't create great broad strokes like you can if you're being painterly and um, loose. So you just need to work with that medium, you know, you take your time, build layers up slowly. Um, I'm going to take some Delft Blue now, which is that purpley colour that we've used in here. And lightly come in over the top of the nose here, where it's really purpley. And you just be very light with it because it's a really strong pigment. And look how much already this has changed this little creature's face, having that um, bit of context through his nose. We've had some really cool weather um, in stark, stark contrast to what was happening here last year. We had major fires everywhere. Still some really nasty big fires going on in WA at the moment, uh, which are a bit terrifying. But on my part of um, the country, it's just been completely the opposite. And I, I'm not saying no to it, I, I like it much cooler, so that makes me happy. I've just done a little bit of that Delft Blue in the darkest part of the nostrils as well. Um, and we'll add 
Cold Grey 6 over the top of that as well. It just helps to make it nice and dark. Down the very bottom here. We'll probably add a little bit of black in there as well. And again, a little bit more of this purple down in what's well, a blue purple, but I tend to call it purple, um, down around the lips here. As you can hear, the coel is still here. <laughs> He's been a bit quiet lately though. He's getting towards the end of his season now. Unless he decides to stay. Okay, I know it looks a bit rough at the moment. It goes through multiple ugly phases. Let's go up in our greys now. So I've got cold grey six now. Again, working lightly. I'm going to build up the colouring. You can see on this nose we've kind of got two distinct areas of darkness. This is this first one here as it comes up onto the bridge of the nose. And then we've got some lighter hair that's sort of shown in between the two. And then it comes down darker again. I'm just constantly referring back to my reference. I'm not pressing hard, I'm protecting my wrist. Plus, if I decide that I need to pull anything up, you know, the, the lighter your layers are, the easier it is for the pencil to come off. So I'm kind of leaving a little spot here where there's a um, lightness, a bit of highlight there but we will actually end up darkening it a bit too as we start to build the values around the nose. little sparrows going crazy having their morning conversations they can be very animated in the mornings all right let's get the darkest color in so we've got some nice context going on here so I've got cold gray six and oops wrong button um, now I'm just going to duplicate this and lighten it up a bit so that I can see what the structure of the, the nose is there. Which is a bit hard because it's very dark. That's what I 
want. Let me just take that down so you can see what I mean. Oops. So now I can see the structure of the nose here. You know, I can see the, the nostril really well. Whereas this is the original photo. So much darker. So I just need to make sure that um, I go back to that original photo to do all of the values and understand the colour because it, lightening it up like that really changes what it looks like otherwise. Okay. Just taking my time. I'm not work, not pressing hard because I've got a nice sharp pencil and I'm working really small lines. We get a good amount of pigment down. One nostril. What this also showed me is I actually have that highlight in the wrong spot. And I'm just going to pull a little bit of that up. Okay, so that's our darkest dark areas. <laughs> this little face, it gets me. It's so sweet. Let's bring in some other dark. Okay. So I actually want to use black, I think, in those, these two areas. I really want them to be much more noticeably dark than what I've got going on in the rest of the nose here. Yeah, I think that that's going to be best. So I'm going to grab my black. And just go over what I just did there with the cold grey six. Okay, now I'm going to take cold grey six and fill in the darkness around. All of that. I might just use the black there too in the middle. The, the, the um, sort of split. Very dark area there too. 
Okay. Just working in really small circular or uh, backwards and forwards motions. I'm going to go over that highlight with a, oh I don't know, like a two or maybe a three, cold grey three. I might put a little bit of um, dark indigo under it first though. But let's not get ahead. Let's um, focus on this first. Look at that little nose. Okay, now I understand that structure anatomy-wise a bit better. I'm going to go back to the original photo now so that I don't end up giving the nose too many highlights etc that it doesn't have. Okay. So overall now when I look at it, I know we need to go a lot darker yet. This highlight is way too dark, uh, way too light, but um, we'll just continue getting the, um, the darkness down first before I focus on that light bit. Corellas out there. Sounds like they're jumping on the veranda. Okay, so that's some darkness down. It's not dark enough though. So, oh look, now he's got a little nose. Very cute. Um, I'm going to take black back. And extend that darkness out a bit. So black is really good not only to get those really dark darks in, um, but it's a really nice shading. 
pencil as well so we can get some nice dark greys if we use it to shade. I'm working around in little circular motions. And I'm being mindful of uh, the anatomy in that I know that what bits are rounded so I want to consider them in a rounded way as I draw them so that, um, to try and portray that and I've talked about that before thinking about the form as you put it down how it would feel under finger how it would feel to have that structure so that, well, they're all things that you should consider as you're drawing as well. Part and parcel of using all of your senses to understand the, um, the thing that you're trying to render on a two-dimensional platform, but to try and make it look three-dimensional. So I'm just working sm slowly and building colour up. Look at that little nose is so adorable, I tell you. I'm going to take a... I'm going to take Old Grey 3 um, and a little bit of dark indigo. So I'm just going to lightly go over the middle part of this highlight with the dark indigo. There's a very blue section there. And then I'm going to go over the highlight with this warm grey 3 just to really knock it back. And then let's bring in the... Oh, so warm, I meant cold by the way. Let's bring the cold grey 6 back again. another layer of darkness down oh so cute um, I've got delft blue back again the darkest parts of the nose again that nice and um, wet snoot it's completely boobable so so far I haven't had to work hard I haven't had to press down hard anywhere just working small and in layers Cold grey four in this area over here, which is not um, anywhere near as dark. A little bit more on top of the nose there, and then again on top of this nostril here.
start to add a bit more depth to some of the surrounding area as well. Really looking at the shapes. Okay. A little tiny bottom lip. And then this side of the face is in a little bit more shadow, so it's a bit darker over here. What have I got in my hand? I'm going to take Cold Grey 6 again and look at the value down here and increase that a little. You can see the embossing lines showing up nicely. Looking at the shapes of the dark. Sometimes I get a bit involved in what I'm doing, so I'm sorry if I stop talking for a minute. <laughs> Just that I've been absorbed. I have little conversations with these creatures. Sometimes we get pulled away. So I'm looking at the little darknesses around the area where the, the um, whiskers come out too. What do you think? Getting there.
All right, I'm going to take cold grey two and start to build up some value in these lighter areas here. Yeah, and I'm just bringing it in up over the darkness as well because it's um, one of those magical pencils that really blends things well together without um, adding too much of its own colour down and then we can come in with another dark pass um, Good. Um, I'll take a little bit more of the Delft blue and just build that purple back up a little bit. Which we will calm down again with a uh, cool grey. It's very quiet outside. It's going to rain again soon too. bit of purpley down and a sip of tea back with my cold grey six and just adding a bit more of that down So I want the purple to be there um, underneath. I don't want it to be shockingly obvious though. So you know, I don't want it like a bright purpley area. So I want to go over what I've done in the purple. Just lightly, it doesn't have to be um, like really pushed back. It's, it's really good at giving some depth without being overbearing provided that you don't leave it as the top layer on, not too much of it anyway. Oh, gonna sneeze. <coughs> oh, bless me. Rightio, and I think we're going to take a little bit of black and then I reckon that little nozzle is done. What do you think? I'll 
back again now. So the first thing I do is re-establish the really dark uh, inner nostril. Excuse me. And I want to re establish that cleft in the nose and this surrounding area, which is nice and dark as well. All of that area that you tend to think of as nice and damp, healthy, cold nose. On dogs, that is. <laughs> so can you see on this side that the the highlight I've got there is just way too too light. It's it's distractingly light compared to what's going on in the reference picture. So I'm just using my black as a shading grey to go over that. The same with the transition between the um, top lip and this bottom lip. The top lip is way too light. You can barely see the difference in the photo. And I, I want, to, want to change that so that you can see the difference a bit, but I don't want it to be so stark like that. So lightly go over the light sections and on this side there's um, just a reduction I just need to reduce the intensity of the lighter shade there of the highlighted sort of area or the area that's caught in light Okay, what do you think? How's that going? Alright, I just want to quickly have a look at what's going on here because I'd like to add these whiskers in. So I want to make sure I've got all the values right down there and that um, I've brought this close enough in, which I think is pretty right. So I've got burnt ochre. that just a little bit closer to the nose there otherwise I think the values on there are fairly right um, cold grey 5 let's bring a few little lines a little bit closer here maybe a few little ones in this way Okay, I think that that's pretty good. Let's sharpen up this black. Okay, I'm just going to sharpen up my black and then we'll get some whiskers in. So, the thing with whiskers is you've just got to commit um, and don't, don't work too hard straight up, work lightly, but 
loosely try and keep your hand right back and sort of flick away so you get the the extended um, lightening of the line where you want it and really look at the way that they actually go because that makes a big difference to how realistic it looks to you visually and you can fix them like you don't don't feel stressed out that that's it it's broken <laughs> you um it's done now you can't go back if you work lightly you can come back and work on the line a little lighter Now I won't do the ones right down here because we've got this area to do yet, but um, we can do a couple of these ones. And then we've got a gorgeous big one coming out here. <laughs> And you kind of want to look at where they're pulling from too, so that they don't all come. There's like layers of lines of, of whiskers, so you want to make sure that they're coming from different areas within. Oh, I so want to do these ones <laughs> and these ones. Um, <clears throat> patience, patience is a virtue, as they say. So you just want to make sure that's coming from inside as well as. Sort of further out on the nose there and if you look at the area on the nose around where the hairs come out where these whiskers come out you'll see that they're darker so let's put a few more sort of darker areas in ready well what do you reckon I think you did pretty well getting that done in an hour I actually thought it was going to take a bit longer than that so I'm pretty happy with that now I've got a black pencil in hand, I, it's like um, a hairdresser with scissors or a gardener with pruning shears, I wanted to go around and play darkening things up. Oh uh, yeah, I'm super happy that we've got that little nose done in an hour. I feel like it's got so much more personality now, I mean look. I feel like you're a little cheeky. A little bit of mischief in that face. Okay, that's grand. Thank you for joining me for the first um, live drawback for 2021. Goodness, time flies when you're having fun, huh? Um, and yeah, next week we'll move back up here and work on this eye, I think. So, that was good. I'm really pl pleased to be back. I can't wait to see some little lemurs popping up in my feed. Make sure you tag me so I can see them. And I hope that you have a week filled with pencil magic. Take care.